What are we discussing on today's podcast, you ask? Well, by the time you are listening to this, it is opening day. So I want to discuss the D-backs final roster, give my thoughts and takes on the final roster, and then prediction time, giving you my D-backs predictions for the season, but not telling you who I think is going to win awards for this D-backs team, just giving you predictions because I want to do a whole D-backs award podcast where I think the D-backs MVP is going to be, where I think the D-backs breakout player of the year is going to be on Friday's podcast because I want to watch the game first. I want to see how the team looks. Then I want to give those kind of award predictions. But for today's podcast, discussing the final roster and just giving overall predictions for the D-backs team this season, all on today's Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. You are locked on Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer, so please go check out my website, MillerThomas24, portfolio.com. On there, you can see all my latest work, from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter, at CreatorThomas24 for my personal account, or just look up Locked On Diamondbacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle, and of course, Thank you for making Locked on Diamondbacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends. One of those platforms is YouTube. So please hit subscribe on the Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel. Last time I checked, I was at 390 nine subscribers so if i could get one more person to hit that subscribe button on youtube locked on dimebacks i would greatly appreciate it but for today's podcast i want to do some predictions for the team on friday i'm going to do like team specific award predictions like mvp of the d-backs cy young of the d-backs breakout player for the d-backs but today i'm going to do some overall big picture predictions for the d-backs but before we get there i want to first talk about the Final roster and what it's looking like because I think there's some interesting thoughts and takeaways that I have on this final roster for the D-backs. The first one is Paven Smith out, Kyle Lewis in. It felt like there was going to be a battle for one of the final spots between a Paven Smith and a Kyle Lewis. Do the D-backs really feel like they need a backup first baseman to Christian Walker? Because that would have been the main benefit of having a Paven Smith on your roster. Yes, you can make the argument that the platoon advantage, when there's a righty on the mound, you got lefty Paven Smith, maybe you could do that with a Christian Walker. But Paven Smith is just not on Christian Walker's level, so there wasn't going to be many games where he said, hey, there's a righty on the mound. Let's hit Christian Walker for Paven Smith because it gives us an advantage. No, Paven Smith, righty on righty, is probably a better connection than Paven Smith lefty against righty. And when you just look at Christian Walker's like career, his two best seasons, of course, 2019 and 2022, right? Well, in 2019, I think he played 152 games. And then last season, he played like 160 games. So the idea that you need a backup first baseman for Christian Walker is just probably wrong because when he's healthy and he's buzzing and he's right, he's playing. 99% of the of the games on the schedule so I don't think you need a backup first baseman for Christian Walker and Paven Smith I like him but it, he's just a hard person to put on the roster and put him in the lineup because defensively is just he has so many weaknesses and flaws where it's like yeah he could go out there in right field but he's not really athletic enough to track down the balls and close the gaps like, you know, some other players that we, you know, some other natural athletes in the outfield. He doesn't have great instinct out there. Sometimes he throws the ball and it could go really anywhere. And that first base, his natural position, not really a great defensive first baseman either. So it's just hard to keep him on the roster where defensively he just feels like such a liability all over the field. And then conversely, Kyle Lewis, the guy who the D-backs gave the final roster spot to, I mean, I don't think this was really a surprise if you – you know, keened in on spring training because since this guy came back 
you know, off injury or whatever he had at the beginning of spring training. This guy has dominated spring training pitching, and you don't want to put too much stock into spring training because you're going against a lot of dudes in the minor leagues, guys who might not even make major league rosters or guys who probably don't have long-term futures in major league baseball. But even with that being said, Kyle Lewis had a 387 average, a 1260 OPS in 31 at-bats in spring training. So he had 12 hits and 31 at-bats. He had three home runs, three doubles. He had 11 RBIs, and he only had eight strikeouts to five walks. Kyle Lewis looked like a man on a mission, and I like Kyle Lewis a lot this season, and he's actually going to be coming up later in my predictions part of the podcast. So Paven Smith out, Kyle Lewis in, and I absolutely love Kyle Lewis in. We've been looking for power platoon righty, and Kyle Lewis might be the answer to those problems. The second thing I want to talk about the final roster is Ryan Nelson over Dre Jameson. We've been doing our starting rotation power rankings for that final spot in the rotation. I've had Dre Jameson number one since the beginning. I've had him 1A where it's been like a coin flip the last couple of weeks. And now we got the announcement. Ryan Nelson will be the number five starter in the rotation. And at first, I was a little bit surprised because I thought Dre Jameson with his pitching makeup was probably a better option for the rotation. But Ryan Nelson has come on strong these last two, three starts in spring training. His most recent start in spring training, I think he went, what, five and two-thirds with, like, five strikeouts. Like, he looked really good. And Dre Jameson is not going to be option to uh, AAA, which I love to see because there was a lot of talk at the beginning of the season. Like, if Dre Jameson won the rotation spot, I felt like Ryan Nelson was going to be sent down to get as many starting opportunities as possible. But that's not what the D-backs are doing here. Ryan Nelson, you're going to be the number five starter. Then Dre Jameson, who... It's probably a little bit more consistent with the high-velocity stuff. You're going to come out the bullpen with your deep pitching arsenal, and then the fact that you got some really great um, wipe-away pitches. I'm trying to think of the word. Pitches to get the opposing uh, opposing batter out. What is the word? Put-away pitch. That's, I, I think Dre Jameson probably has more put-away pitches than Orion Nelson. So I love the fact that... One person won the job, and the other is also staying on the major league roster. Because I think it would have been a little sad for one of these guys to win the rotation spot, and then the other has to be sent down to Reno. No, you both were in the competition. It was close. We picked one, and guess what? The other one, you didn't win the rotation job, but you still won a major league roster spot. I think that was a great move by the D-backs, and I love seeing two rookie, two rookies, one in the rotation, one in the bullpen, young, velocity, and just some fresh, just some freshness in the bullpen and rotation. Just some youth. You always need an infusion of young talent, and the D-backs are doing that with those two guys. And then lastly, I think the bullpen is looking solid. That's like one of my takeaways because Joe Mantiply is going to start the season on the injured list, I think, or just will start the season hurt, won't be there. And in his replacement will be Kyle Nelson. And just the fact that, like, if I told you last season. Joe Mantiply was going to miss like two, three weeks. You would have been like, whoa, this bullpen is now a one-man show run by Kyle Nelson. And with Joe Mantiply out, the bullpen will crumble. There's no one you could really trust. There's like one or two dudes that you could trust from the bullpen. Like it just wasn't a good situation. Like outside Kyle Nelson, like Kevin Ginkle last season, if I told you Joe Mantiply was going to miss multiple weeks, you had been like, there, there's no one to bring out that bullpen yeah, you would have trust outside like those two dudes. You would have felt like the world would have collapsed. You would have felt like it would have entered apocalyptic type situations with that bullpen because it was so thin after Mantiply. I don't know how the D-backs would have gone games. Like you would have asked your rotation to pitch into the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings more consistently if there was no Joe Mantiply. But look at the bullpen this year entering 2023, knowing Mantiply is not going to be there to start the season. And I'm like, I still Feel good about this bullpen, even without Mantiply, because no Mantiply start the season, but Miguel Castro is solid. Scott McHugh, I think I've been told it's McGough. So Scott McGough is going to be back there, closer experience. Andrew Chafin is a stud. Kevin Ginkle's coming off a strong season. You got the rookie, Dre Jameson now. Carlos Vargas just was told he made the roster. Top 20 prospect, high-velocity stuff. Then we'll see what Cole Sulcer has. And guess what? If a guy like Cole Sulcer doesn't work out, you bring Mantiply back, you cut Cole Sulcer, and now you just elevate Kyle Nelson to the bullpen, who was already a beast last season. The fact that I'm entering 2023 knowing Man's probably won't start the season in the bullpen, and I still don't feel like that's an issue. I feel like it's not a complete disaster that Mantiply won't be there to start the year. That's a really good feeling as a D-backs fan for once. 
if you want to bet on the bullpen being, you know, solid or better than solid, maybe being above league average, then the best place to place bets is FanDuel.com because the tournament is heating up and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. They can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net all on an app that's safe secure and super easy to use so don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join fanduel today just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up make every moment more with fanduel and guys i'm struggling a little bit today because i volunteered for the arizona coyotes i did a little gardening and i'm a person that deals with allergies so my nose is a little clogged right now so if i sound nasally i apologize but With opening day upon us, let's do some overall big picture predictions for this D-backs team. And I wrote down eight predictions here, so we'll do four a segment. And the first prediction I want to talk about is, I think the D-backs will lead the National League in steals. I've talked about it a lot this offseason about how the D-back speed will be their biggest weapon this season. And with the new rule attempts, the lack of pickoffs you could do, the bigger bases hell even the pitch clock can help out because they're just going to be too much on these pitchers minds i think the d-backs will lead the nl in steals they were already fourth last season with 104 in the national league and now you're getting a full season of jake mccarthy who had 23 steals in like 99 games last season alec thomas is going to probably play 100 games he's considered what top 15 fastest player in baseball according to Statcast sprint speed maybe top 20 Corbin Carroll, the fastest player in baseball, already has five stolen bases in spring training. Might get to like 40 this regular season. Josh Rojas, out of nowhere, turned into a speedster last year. He had like 23 steals. Perdomo had nine last year. Marte could probably get close to 10. Moreno can move. Like If you get like 30 plus, like 30 to 40 from McCarthy and Carroll, like those guys could be 30 to 40 stolen base people. Perdomo, or excuse me, Josh Rojas and Alec Thomas could each be 15 to 20 stolen bases. And then Perdomo, Marte, and Moreno could all be around double digits. Plus, you got to always factor in like most players, if they play 140 games, will probably get a steal or two. So a Christian Walker will throw in a couple steals. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, I don't think Evan Longoria will probably get one, but Nick Ahmed will probably get a few. Like, I don't see how there's not a scenario where the D-backs don't get like 120, 130 steals and lead the National League. I think it will be their biggest weapon this season. And speed is going to kill. Speed will be the name of the game this season for the D-backs. How about this prediction? Talking about big picture. D-backs will finish with 80-plus wins. Now, is that an 80 and 82 record? Is that 88 wins in the wild card? I don't know. But I think there will be, when you look at that win-loss record for the D-backs, I think that first number will start with an Eight, I will be happy with a 500 record. I don't, I don't think the D-backs need to make the wild card team this year, but if they just won. If they just went 81 and 81, I think that would be a successful season, a step in the right direction, and I would be happy. Plus, you got to remember, you're playing your division opponents less this season. The D-backs were like 5-14 and 14 against the Dodgers and the Padres last season. The D-backs are not very good against the NL West, and the D-backs, I think, play the Dodgers eight times in like the first 10 days of the season. And then after that, they only play them like five more times or like one more time. I have to look at the exact schedule. But basically, the D-backs play like three series against the Dodgers and two of them come in like the first month. So if you can, you know, play against play against the Dodgers well to start the season, like that's going to give you a huge bump in the division standings. And that just might be the bump you need for the rest of the season, at least when you look at the in-division standings. And the fact that the team is deeper, playing your division opponents less. I love the D-backs for 80-plus wins this season. How about this? How about this prediction that I think is super fun? I definitely think it's possible. D-backs will have multiple rookies finishing in the top five of Rookie of the Year voting. It won't be just Corbin Carroll. We all know Corbin Carroll is the unanimous 
rookie of the year favorite as he should be because Corbin Carroll, some people are predicting a 30-30 season for Corbin Carroll, a true five-tool player. He could potentially win the Gold Glove Award this year. He's probably going to lead off, expect a 300 average, expect a crazy OPS. If he gets 15 to 20 home runs, maybe 40 stolen bases, like Corbin Carroll could put together an all-star campaign this year, but it's not just going to be Corbin Carroll that's the only rookie that's going to be a true contributor to this D-backs team this season because someone like Ryan Nelson as the number five starter in the D-backs rotation, that's a huge spot to be in to start the year. And he's five right now, but listen, that's five in name or ranking or whatever, but that doesn't mean he can't pitch like the third best pitcher in the rotation. Like if Ryan Nelson pitches worse than Madison Bumgarner, then he probably shouldn't be in the rotation. So I think he'll probably be at least the fourth best pitcher in the rotation. I do want to give some respect to Zach Davies, so I don't think it's bad. But if Ryan Nelson even pitches better than Zach Davies, like who knows? Ryan Nelson looked good in his short little stint last season with the D-backs to end the year. If over the course of 25 starts, if Ryan Nelson's like a 3-9 ERA, a whole bunch of strikeouts, pitches, uh, I don't know, 150 innings, something like that. He could definitely be in the top five of the rookie of the year voting. And you never know. Maybe Dre Jameson also finishes in the top five. The d could have three dudes finish in the top five because maybe he wins it as an elite bullpen army. Maybe he gets some votes that way as an elite high leverage reliever that just striking out dudes. Maybe he eventually takes over as a D-backs closer. Or maybe... He pitches so well that the D-backs kick out a Davies or Mass and Bumgarner for the rotation. And now you have the back end of your rotation being anchored by two rookies. Now you got Ryan Nelson, Dre Jameson, and Corbin Carroll all in the top five for the rookie of the year voting. I think that's very fun for the D-backs. That would be a very good glimpse into the D-backs future about how many building blocks we have and how high our ceiling can be over the next few years. And if the D-backs do have multiple dudes finishing the top five in rookie of the year voting, I mean... That would just be so exciting for the future of this team. And I don't know how often it happens in Major League Baseball, but three of the top five would seem absolutely crazy. And then the last prediction I want to talk about before we end this segment is Ketel Marte will look like an elite second baseman again. Ketel Marte had a really down season by not just his standards. I mean, it just wasn't a very good season overall. He batted 240, 727 OPS, only 12 home runs, 52 RBIs in 137 games. This is someone that was maybe the, you know, brief face of the franchise after Paul Goldschmidt left. We know about the incredible 2019 season where he finished fourth in MVP voting, but since then, it's been a lot of up and down for Keta Marte. Now in 2021, he was a stud, but he only played 90 games. So are we going to get like a 2019, 2020, 2019 2021 Ketel Marte or is he going to look like the guy from 2020 and 2022 but if you do want to play the odd even game it is an odd year for Ketel Marte 2023 and he seems to be better in the odd year so I do think Ketel Marte will be in for a bounce back season I think with Jose Altuve out the first couple months Ketel Marte could reclaim the title as best second baseman in baseball. And if that's true, then I think the D-backs do hit their 80-win mark because I don't think you could hit 80 wins without Ketel Marte looking like prime Ketel Marte. And just speaking of the D-backs in the NL West, right now, Locked On is doing this great thing to get you ready for the baseball season because Locked On MLB has the ultimate six episode season preview our local and national experts give in-depth analysis of every team and division in a way only locked on can provide find all six episodes on locked on mlb on youtube or wherever you get your podcasts all right all right all right let's wrap up the pod with some more big picture predictions for the d-backs so far i have D-backs will lead the NL in steals. D-backs will finish with 80-plus wins. D-backs will have multiple rookies finishing in the top five of the Rookie of the Year voting. Ketel Marte, and then the final one from the from that last segment is Ketel Marte will look like an elite second baseman once again. So a lot of positivity, and all these predictions will be positive. I don't think I have any negative predictions down for the D-backs. If you want a negative prediction, Madison Bumgarner will not be good. In 2023, that's the only negative prediction I could get for you because I think this will be a very fun 
I keep saying fun, exciting season because that's what I think it is. I think you're going to see such an infusion of young talent that actually flashes. Like, I think the upside and ceiling of this team is pretty good. I don't think it's like World Series contender. I don't think it's really even playoff contender. But just being a good baseball team where it's, you could watch 162 games and not feel like by the All-Star break, your season's already over. I think that would be very enticing for D-backs fans this season. That's not a prediction. I mean, it is prediction, but not an official prediction from this little bit that we're doing. Because the next official prediction that I want to give, and I gave it to Sully Baseball. I don't care if it's Homer. I don't think it. I, I don't care if you think it's crazy, because it's not crazy. This guy is that good, and the man he's paired with can get him to the promised land. Because I believe Zach Allen will win the Cy Young this season. Maybe you think I'm just being a biased Homer, and maybe you're right because. <laughs> Look, I love Zach Allen, and I watch him more than any other starting pitcher, and he's that dude. He's that legit. Brent Strom is the Midas touch when it comes to turning pitchers into Cy Young Award winners. He's done it with so many different dudes in Houston, and Zach Allen last season finished fourth in Cy Young voting, and he probably should have finished even higher. He had that crazy streak of not allowing earned runs, led the league in whip, led the league in lowest hits per nine allowed. Dude, for the first time, is starting this season healthy. Remember, last we have uh, we have yet to see Zach Allen start opening day. It's usually Madison Bumgarner against the San Diego Padres. For the first time, it's going to be Zach Allen against the L.A. Dodgers, and that could be the start that the D-backs need to be the catalyst to their whole season. Zach Allen starting the season feels like we're getting a head start because usually he likes to come in the third week of April, but we're getting him from the very first game. I think that'll be a huge head start for the D-backs this season. The next official prediction, this one is not like anything crazy like the one I just gave. The next one is D-backs bullpen will be league average. I'm not saying top five. I'm not saying top 10. I'm just saying like the 18th best bullpen in Major League Baseball, the 15th best bullpen in Major League Baseball because the last couple seasons, the D-backs bullpen has been terrible. And just going back to last year, 74 wins, the D-backs have a league average bullpen. Just last season, they're probably a 500 team. And so when I look at this D-backs team, I think the lineup is going to be fine. I think the rotation... There's some question marks, but I do think it's solid. The bullpen has always been the biggest question mark surrounding this team. We'll look at the three phases, I think, since 2019. And Mike Hazen has struggled signing guys. Usually it's been old, crusty veterans past their prime. But this past season, he switched up his philosophy, got a little bit younger, targeted dudes with high-velocity stuff like the Carlos Vargas's of the world, bringing in a Scott McGough with closing experience, bringing back Andrew Chafin. Like, he wanted to just add a high quality relievers who could also uh, who also have some put away stuff as well. So I think for the first time the D-backs bullpen will be able to strike out opposing batters in those high leverage situations. I still don't know if the closing situation will be good, but I think it could almost go with a closer committee with the McGoffs and the Ginkles and the Shaftons and maybe even the Dre Jamisons and be okay in that spot. Maybe you don't have to have one go-to guy that has to give you 40 saves in a season. Maybe you can make a rotation, but even with that being said, I think this D-backs bullpen will be good, and for once, I don't think there's too many holes and too many dudes who I look at and say, oh my god, he's going to come out in this spot? The D-backs are about to give up three runs for the first time. I actually have a little bit of trust with some of the dudes coming out the bullpen this year. This next one, I don't even know what this one even really looks like. It's just more of a feeling and narrative, but Kyle Lewis redemption arc. Kyle Lewis was the 2020 AL Rookie of the Year, and the Seattle Mariners thought it was a smart trade. And a lot of people, my locked on chat, Mariners Twitter, thought it was a smart trade. We're going to give up a Rookie of the Year for Cooper Hummel, someone who only crushes Arizona Fall League pitching, spring training. And I uh, hope you guys didn't hear that. That was my Outlook email notification. He crushes spring training, Arizona Fall League, and AAA. Cooper Hummel is the definition of a quad A player. Elite in the minor leagues, but just not good enough for the major leagues. And I think the fact that he traded Cooper Hummel, like the Mariners are going to try to make him work. I just don't see Cooper Hummel being a consistent or even a above average contributor to the Mariners because he was not that with the D-backs. Meanwhile, the D-backs are getting back a real dude with some potential. Yes, he has injury concerns, and maybe he's only a, a maybe he's only a DH at this point going forward. I do think he'll get outfield opportunities, but even if he's only a DH and plays like 75, 80, 90 games, this dude could still get you maybe 15 home runs and just be that platoon power righty that the D-backs have been missing. And if the, he gives that to the D-backs, if he plays 90 games and has 15 home runs and a 
260 average, but like an 805 OPS, kind of Christian Walker S stats, but in a smaller, smaller sample size. I think that's a win for this D backs team. I think that's a fleece of a trade because I do not consider Cooper Hummel a major leaguer. Then the final prediction I want to give on today's podcast is D backs will have the best outfield defense they had arguably the best outfield defense last season because they led all outfields last year in ultimate zone rating the ranger stat and were third in defensive run save now a lot of that is because dalton varsha was like by far and away the best defensive outfielder in baseball last season but without dalton varsha you still got corbin carroll who seems to be if they're running for a gold glove as a rookie, he seems to have all the defensive instinct. Alec Thomas, he's not going to play every day, but when he is going to play, he's probably going to man center field. The day he's on the bench, it sounds like Corbin Carroll will be in center. But if you have Corbin Carroll and Alec Thomas manning center in left field or whatever, I don't know where Corbin Carroll is going to be. Probably left field, maybe right field. Whoever, if those two are out there in the outfield, whatever side they're on, that side is just you're not getting a ball through a gap on that side. And then on the other side, it could be a Jake McCarthy. It could be a Lord's Guriel. We'll see. Jake McCarthy probably uh, needs to work on his defensive instincts a little bit more. But the fact that he has so much speed, he can at least, even with the lack of instincts, he can cover up so much ground because of that speed. And Lord's Guriel is a solid defensive outfielder. So you're going to have two elite defensive outfielders probably on the field at all times in Alec Thomas and Corbin Carroll. And then that third guy is at least going to be solid with some upside like a Jake McCarthy or just a wily veteran who's very smart, high IQ like a Lord's Guriel. So I think the D-backs, once again, will have the best defensive outfield in Major League Baseball, at least in the National League, because the Blue Jays outfield with Dalton Varsho and Kevin Kiermaier might give us a run for our money. Now, that's it for this edition of the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. Happy opening day day. Tomorrow, we'll give our team award predictions. D-backs MVP, D-backs Cy Young, D-backs breakout star, D-backs most disappointing player, all that fun stuff. And, of course, we'll be breaking down. I'm recording Thursday night after the game, so we'll give my live reaction to the D-backs first game of the season. Hopefully, it's positive. Hopefully, we can talk about something fun and I said fun a lot on this podcast. Hopefully we can talk about the upcoming season and be excited because we just saw the D-backs take down the Dodgers. I'm praying that's going to happen. So we'll see after tonight's results. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Thank you for tuning into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Make your second listen of the day, the Locked on Fancy Baseball podcast with Matt with the Matt and Dom who will keep you up to date with all the fancy baseball news and analysis you need throughout the season. And as always come back tomorrow for more Diamondbacks news coverage and insight. Stay safe, stay healthy. Deuces.